It has been a while since I've done a video talking about the people that were involved with what happened on January 6th, or as I like to call it, the invasion at the Capitol building. I don't, I refuse to call it an insurrection. I just call it an invasion because that's how it pretty much plays itself out to me. But this story right here stuck out to me for a numerous amount of reasons. And I'm going to go into that when I get into this story itself. It was posted up in my Discord. Shout out to Tawana for posting it up. I said, oh, I'm going to definitely talk about this one. When you hear the details of it, then you'll understand why. But as you can see, this person's name, who you see on the screen, his name is Stephen Miles. He's out of Florida. It said he was arrested April 8, 2022 for the role he played in what happened on January 6th. Now, you got to keep in mind, this guy was arrested like a year and a half later after what occurred. So he was walking free for a year and a half behind what happened. And now fast forward to more recently, and by the way, I'm recording this video on February 13, 2024. He has officially been uh, convicted. Well, not so much also convicted, but he's also been sentenced as well for the crimes in which he committed. So, like I said, this man's name is Stephen Miles, and he has a very interesting occupation, which is why I said he's probably going to have a good time when he goes to prison. But this man is an adult film star. But not only is he just an adult film star, but he is an academy based adult film star, which why it was so hard to find a picture that I could use to put up here because I had to look up his actual name and not his stage name that he goes by to provide a suitable picture to use for this video. But it says that he's an adult film star and it says that he beat up cops during what happened on January 6th. So, again, there goes that so-called, I guess this, this, this is the good all-American compliance system at play here. You know, the same thing that they try to tell us that we need to stop doing and nothing will happen to us and look at what he's doing. But many of them were doing that this day. But here's what made me very interested in the video, um, not the video, but in the topic itself to make a video behind this. The subheading reads, he blamed the FBI, his drug using mother and BLM Antifa terrorist thugs for his actions during the invasion. So you blamed the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the fact that your mother was a drug addict, if that's even the case and BLM and Antifa for why you went and did what you did and he didn't blame himself not one time. This is also the same crowd that tells us that we need to take accountability for our actions, yet he just blamed three entities for why he did what he did. He didn't put any blame on himself. He said it was their fault why he went up there. And if you notice, a lot of them do that same thing, especially when it comes to this. It was never their fault. It was never the fact that they decided to just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to go drive out or fly out to D.C. and go invade this capital with with others. It's not. It couldn't possibly be my fault. It's their fault. But they're the same ones to tell us we need to take accountability. So now that I've gotten out of that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead now and get into the article. And let me tell you right now, I've already skimmed through most of this article and it's going to be some stuff in here that's going to be said that's probably going to make people feel very uncomfortable that's why i, I had to like really kind of like prepare myself for what it is i'm about to read to y'all because many of you are this is going to be your first time after hearing about this at all a federal judge has sentenced proud boy member and Academy adult film actor Stephen Miles, who performs under the name Sergeant Miles, to two years in prison for assaulting police officers during the January 6, 2021 I'm sorry, invasion at the U.S. Capitol. Miles must also pay $2,000 in restitution and undergo one year of supervised release after prison. Miles, a military veteran who has a wife, accepted full responsibility for the crime in which he committed and said he was humbled and humiliated according to court documents. However, this month he has also reposted images on X, formerly Twitter, blaming the FBI, the quote-unquote deep state, 
and hashtag BLM Antifa terrorist thugs for staging a riot to cover up a stolen election. Now, I want y'all to also pay attention to this, too. And disclaimer, this is not me supporting BLM in any way. I've, for those of y'all who have been subscribed to me already know how I feel about that organization, if you want to call it that. But notice all the time when you have people like this person right here or anyone else who has anti-black sentiments, they always link Black Lives Matter and Antifa together as if they're the same thing. Every time they mention, I don't know, y'all may or may not have noticed that, but whenever they mention a BLM, they always have Antifa like somewhere behind it or in close proximity to it as if they're working together. To my knowledge, they are very different organizations. They have, as far as I'm concerned, no connection, but they like to link both of them together. His posts repeat former President Donald Trump's unsubstantiated claims that an unprecedented conspiracy of nationwide voter fraud stole the 2020 election from him without leaving any evidence. Miles has since deactivated his ex account. Video captured Miles of the Capitol riots wearing a jacket bearing his last name and a t-shirt that read Trump 2020 F your feelings. Footage showed him shoving and throwing punches at officers before breaking a window with a wooden beam and crawling through it. He lucky he didn't get the Ashley Babbitt treatment. Miles has also been has been charged with assaulting, resisting or impeding officers, civil disorder and engaging in physical violence in a restricted building or grounds with a dangerous weapon, according to WFLA. He faced up to 45 years in prison. Keywords up to not actually 45 years, but struck a plea deal by pleading guilty to the assault. Now, look at that. This can now fall into the category of Operation Protect the White Boy because he was he could have faced up to 45 years. But again, the key words is up to not actually being sentenced to 45 years. But because of the plea deal, he was able to knock off 43 years and only have to do two years in prison, plus one year of supervised release the year after. So say he's going in now. He'll be out in 2026 and then he has another year for supervised release. So he won't be completely out of the clutches of the system until 2027. Miles's lawyer asked the judge not to imprison him, pointing out that he was. Now, here's the part where they start giving the backstory. Here comes the sob story that that apparently no one knew about until now. Pointing out that he was, quote unquote, abandoned by his drug addict mother at the age of five who offered him marijuana at a young age and then he was violated and abused by his foster family now let me just say this if this indeed happened to him like they claim it did that was definitely wrong if he was really affected by whatever his mother did and he was abused in the way that they said it is fine however the fact that they're using that as a reason as to why he's why he did what he did no that's not going to fly. That is not going to fly. You mean to tell me what happened to you then as a child with this is what contributed to this again? And also, he said that he blamed his mother, for the FBI and BLM and Antifa for why he did what he did. So now we're also tacking on some other stuff. Yeah. And they fell for that, which is why he got that two years instead of the the much longer sentence that he should have gotten. Again, these people ran up on government property. One of the most recognizable government property buildings and establishments, not only in this establishment that's known as the USA, but also around the globe. This is the, the capital is a very recognizable monument. It's a very recognizable structure. If no one knew anything else, they know about that. Between that and, you know, the White House and, and the Washington Monument. I think those are like some of the most three recognizable things in D.C. If people didn't know anything else about D.C., they know about those three things right there. He also said he almost died in a drive-by shooting and saw his mother being violated at age seven. He also said a robber took all of his family's possessions, killed the, the family cat, and wrote, die cracker on the wall. 
He began living on the street at age 12 and experienced post-traumatic stress disorder during his military service, his lawyer added. See, what I mean, they're adding all of that in to try to say there's no way that he could possibly go to jail for all this time for what he did because of all this trauma he had in his life and that somehow contributed to why he did what he did. That what happened allegedly in his life did not have anything to do with what he went and did on January 6, 2021. That was far from his mind. He went out there with the intent of being destructive, just like everybody else. They can keep the sob stories from me. I don't care. It may make me sound insensitive and it probably because I am sounding insensitive. I do not care. We got to we have much more that we got to deal with and nobody cares about our pain. Why should I care about his? He made the decision to go into that building that day with all the other thugs. Yes, I call them thugs because they love to throw that label onto us. But what we <laughs> we weren't out there doing all of that. Of course, you had some people who looked like us wanted to you know, leap out of there with them fools and do what they did. And now look at them. Now they're in the same position he's in probably for a much longer time. But again, choices. He made the conscious decision to go out there and do what he did. I don't care what went on in his life. If it happened again, it is what it is. But there's a lot of people who have a lot of shit going on in their life too. And they didn't go and do what he did. So why should I feel bad for him? Because if the shoe was on the other foot, they wouldn't feel bad for us. Miles began performing in adult videos in 2013 and has made videos with long running studios such as Lucas Entertainment, Falcon Hot House, and Raging Stallion. And I'm not even going to read the titles. They listed the titles. I'm not even going to go that far with this, so we're going to skip that part. However, around 2018, Miles began making social media posts voicing his support for Trump criticizing adult studios for acting like scared little bitches and shutting down productions due to the woo woo or the China virus and talking about how out of place he felt in Portland, Oregon, surrounded by surrounded by quote unquote douchebag social justice warriors. And that's another trigger word right there. Social justice warrior or SJW. Keep those buzzwords in mind. Feminazis and idiot Hillary supporters. Other adult performers began publicly criticizing Miles. One of his scene partners, performer Curtis Wolf, said he was disgusted to have appeared in a scene with the quote unquote nut job. And what an interesting choice of words. Amid reports of studios banning Miles, Falcon Studios director Steve Cruz and Lucas Entertainment's formerly Republican and Islamophobic owner Michael Lucas wrote in Miles's defense. Miles has given a lot for this country. Lucas wrote in a now deleted post on X and the least of our industry can do is allow him to exercise his talents without subjecting him to political vetted vetting based on views shared by a large percentage of the country and our customers. Five people died during the invasion and roughly 140 police officers were injured. The injuries included a broken spine, a lost eye, lost fingers, brain damage, and multiple cases of PTSD. Now, I didn't even know about people losing their eyes and losing their fingers, but that just shows you how crazy that situation was. While ransacking the Capitol, the rioters shattered windows while trying to access congressional chambers, smeared feces in the hallway, and stole computer equipment, potentially constituting a national security breach. Over 1,265 people have been charged for their alleged criminal actions during the riots. Trump's baseless claims about the stolen 2020 election were rejected over 60 times for lack of evidence in court across the country, including in rulings by Trump-appointed judges. After reading all of that and even his little sob story where you can cue the little violin at any time in your head or in whatever point that you feel like you need to do so, I can honestly say I feel nothing for him. I meant exactly what I said. And this is where people like Harvey come into play. And shout out to Harvey over at Your World. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, which you probably should be already anyway. I'm in his I feel like we're sharing a brain right now, because when I just said about how I don't feel anything for him, no matter how bad his situation might have been, 
to try to invoke that as a reason as to why you did that that is it that shows a, a, a lack of morals that this dude has on his character because let's hypothetically say what he said happened to his life actually happened to use that as a scapegoat to try to give us the reasoning as to why you did what you did and you're saying that this was the reason of it was that's very messed up because you're using something that actually happened to you to try to excuse what you did on january 6th when obviously none of that had anything to do with what you did and if that was the case why didn't you just go to therapy no you decide i'm gonna go to dc and and and, and run up into the capitol building and basically become a domestic terrorist which by the way i have yet to hear any of them be given that title of domestic terrorist because that's exactly what they did that was a domestic terroristic act that they pulled i don't care what anybody says that's what it is because it is what it is that's what they did but they can wag their fingers and say oh look at them black people they going up they're tearing up their neighborhoods they they're looting they're 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 burning down stores and all types of stuff like that a lot of the black people that's doing that have no stake or claim over some of the stuff that's there and they had a reason as to why they did it it was out of anger for an injustice y'all went up there because someone told you to or put something in your head that wasn't true and y'all ran up in there by the thousands and then wonder why this is happening to you right now and now you're trying to sit up here and cope or try to do a cop out of why you did what you did you cannot blame your mother for you running up in that capital you cannot blame the fbi for why you ran up in that capital you cannot blame blm or antifa or any other organization for why you did what you did you stephen miles ran up in that building because you wanted to just like everybody else who was there that day they went out there and ran up in there because they wanted to and they have the nerve to call us thugs and monsters and savages when that was probably one of the biggest displays of savage behavior that we have seen in probably the last decade. That will never leave people's minds. That will forever be etched in history. People around the world have seen this probably several times over, mainly because they will not take it out of the news. And, th and they shouldn't. Really, to be honest, they should not. That should be in heavy rotation. If I get lamestream media, one thing is I won't give them much. I'm glad they kept that in rotation for as long as they did and still are because they're still rounding up people. That's just how long this thing is going to last because the only remnants they have of this incident right now are the people they're going after still arresting or still charging or still convicting even if some of their sentences are very lackluster like his is only getting two years of what should have been an up to what they said up to 45 years sentencing of the crime in which he committed so yes i'm glad that it's staying out there i don't care for whatever reason they keep trying to say oh it's because the election was stolen no they keep saying the election was stolen but they have yet to provide any type of proof that it was they're just mad because they lost so why so instead of just taking that their lumps then take instead of taking that l they said no it just had to be stolen i can only imagine hypothetically speaking if trump was to lose the second time around what they would come up with next what would they do next they were not going to do the same thing that they did in january of 2021 they're not going to do that they're going to do something else but I'm just curious. But as for this dude right here, before I wrap up this video, all I'm going to say is this. With the lifestyle that he leads and the line of work that he's in or was in, something tells me he's going to have a very good time where he's headed.